Good day everyone, I'm teacher Carla and we will be discussing about the sentence definition and sentence types. So, okay, let's begin. What is a sentence? A sentence is a group of words containing a subject and a predicate. A subject is the focus of the sentence. It is what or who is being referred to in the sentence. And predicate is a group of words or it can be a phrase that tells us something about the subject. Let's say for example, Daniel lives in the mansion next door. So, the subject here is Daniel because he is being referred to in the sentence while the predicate is lives, the phrase lives in the mansion next door. There are eight sentence types in English. They are categorized into two, four of which is according to function and another four is according to structure. But we will first discuss about sentence types according to function. First is declarative sentence. Declarative sentence is a sentence which purpose is to tell information, to relay, to share something, a statement of fact. Example, I love eating chocolates. This is a declarative sentence because I am telling you the fact that I love eating chocolates. Another example is Ed Sheeran is my favorite singer. Another statement of fact, because I'm just telling you that Ed Sheeran is my favorite singer, and that's it. Declarative sentence ends with a period. Next is imperative sentences. Imperative sentence express, expresses a command, gives an instruction or demands, requesting something, or telling someone to do something. Let's say, for example, the sentence, please take your seat. This sentence tells someone to sit down. That makes it an imperative sentence. Let's say, for example, put your phone away and listen to me. It is punctuated with an exclamation mark. Because you are exerting a force or you are really requiring someone to do something. It tells that you are serious. So that someone that you are referring to should do the act that you expect them to do. Next is interrogative sentence. Interrogative sentence is the most basic sentence types and it is punctuated with a question mark. An interrogative sentence from the word interrogate, you are asking questions. The purpose of the interrogative sentence is only to ask questions to get information. Let's take this sentence for example. Are you sure she's coming? This way, your purpose is only to ask questions. Another example is, what is your name? You are just asking the name of someone. And the fourth sentence type, according to function, is exclamatory sentence. Exclamatory sentences are loaded with emotion. It expresses strong emotions such as excitement, surprise, anger, and the like. Let's say for example, this is so delicious. The sentence, this is so delicious, is an exclamatory sentence because it tells that you are impressed with the taste of that food or to indicate the level of the emotion attached to that sentence. That is the four sentence types according to function. Before we move to another types of sentences according to structure, we will first distinguish the difference between independent clause and dependent clause. Independent clause is a group of words that expresses a complete thought 
and can stand alone as a sentence. Let's say, for example, I failed my two subjects last semester. It consists of a subject and a verb. Therefore, it expresses a complete thought. On the other hand, dependent clause is a group of words that does not express a complete thought. Therefore, it cannot stand alone. It is needed to be attached to independent clauses in order for it to have a meaning. Example of dependent clause is because I did not pass the requirements. It is a dependent clause from the verb itself because it is needed to be attached to independent clause in order for this to be meaningful. If we're going to attach the, our example of dependent clause to our example in independent clause, it will be formed this way. I failed my two subjects last semester because I did not pass the requirement. In this sentence, we now have one independent clause and one dependent clause. Therefore, a dependent clause can only have a meaning if it is attached to independent process. Otherwise, it will not give us a complete thought. Allow me to introduce myself. I am Lawrence Randy M. Gaiola, partner of Miss Carla Joy Alcaraz. Now, you have talked about the four types of sentences according to function. Now, let us talk about the four types of sentences according to structure. Now, these four types are simple sentence, compound sentence, complex sentence, and compound complex sentences. Now, the first one, what is a simple sentence? A simple sentence consists of one independent clause. An independent clause contains a subject and a verb and expresses a complete thought. For example, Mary likes tea. The sun goes around the earth. Now, if you have noticed that these two examples can stand alone, just like in the first sentence, Mary likes tea. Now, in that sentence, if you notice that there are two factors, the subject and the verb. Now, in that sentence, the subject is Mary and the verb is like. Likewise, in the second sentence, the verb is goes around and the subject is the sun. In that sentence, it can fully express a thought with no barriers, no hindrances, or no ambiguous meaning. Next up is the compound sentence. Now a compound sentence is a two or more independent clauses joined by conjunction or semicolon. Each of these clauses could form a sentence alone. Example, Mary went to work, but John went to the party. Our car broke down. We came last. Now if you notice that these two examples, if you break down these two, it can be fully expressed as one thought. Just like Mary went to work. That alone can fully express a thought. But it is conjoined by the word but. Now, if you put it together, Mary went to work, but John went to, to the party. See? Now, it is fully a thought that it expresses only in one meaning. Now, for the second sentence, it is somehow difficult because it is conjoined by a semicolon. Our car broke down, semicolon, we came last. Now, there is a pattern in forming a compound sentence. It is a bit easy yet hard to uh, execute. So the pattern is independent clause, coordinating conjunction, and another independent clause. 
Now the third one is the complex sentence. A complex sentence consists of independent clause plus a dependent clause. A dependent clause starts with a subordinating conjunction or relative pronoun and contains a Samples. We missed our plane because we were late. Our dog barks when she hears a noise. Now, if you notice that these two sentences, if we carefully break down these two, uh, it is completely an ambiguous meaning, just like in the first sentence. Now, if I say we missed our plane, it turns into a simple sentence, right? But what if I say we were late? It is completely slightly ambiguous sentence. Now if I put on these two conjoined with the word because it is now fully expressed as one thought. They missed the plane because they were late. Now the last sentence is the compound complex sentence. The compound complex sentence consists of at least two independent classes and one or more dependent classes. Now the last one is the compound complex sentence. The compound complex sentence consists of at least two independent classes and one or more dependent classes. Examples are John didn't come because he was ill, so Mary was not happy. Another would be he left in a hurry after he got a phone call, but he came back five minutes later. As you can see in the first example, you would notice that if we break down this sentence, you would immediately see or notice on which of these are the independent classes. Now to indicate, these independent classes here are John didn't come and Mary was not happy. Since, two, since these two phrases can absolutely stand on their own, well the, well the phrase because he was sick is determined as dependent clause, which has shown the evidence that this term cannot express a full thought. Now, if constructing a, comp a compound complex sentence, there is a certain plan that can be used to achieve this, and is the independent clause, a dependent clause, conjunction, and another independent clause. Now, we have talked about sentences, but there are instances that is actually not a sentence, and these are called the fragments. Fragments are incomplete yes, in sentences. Usually the fragments are pieces of sentences that have become disconnected from the main clause. One of the easiest ways to correct them is to remove the period between the fragment and the main clause. Other kinds of punctuation may be needed for the newly combined sentences. The problem with fragments is that they don't tell the whole story. Key elements are missing, leaving the reader hanging without a sense of the full thought. To avoid this common error, let's look at some ways to spot a sentence fragment. One of the first steps in this process is understanding the difference between a complete sentence and a sentence fragment. Now there are some common ways in which a sentence fragment may occur, but the most important takeaway is that almost every fragment is the result of these three key elements. A missing um, subject, a missing verb, and an incomplete thought. That is all, thank you, and I hope that you have learned something from us.